Have I been a terrible fool, Arthur? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But one thing I do know, there ain't no shame in looking for a better world. <laughs> you know, nothing means more to me than this game, the bond we share. It's the most real thing to me. I would kill for it, I would happily die for it. Tell the truth, I ain't even sure I fully understand Dutch's plan with all this. Like I said, John, when the time comes, you go. You keep killing folk, Dutch. I'm just trying to make sure that some of us survive, Arthur. What about loyalty to, to everything? You've been loyal. I've been loyal. Look what that caused. You know, all that ever mattered to me was loyalty. It's all I knew. I wish things were different. Got tuberculosis. I'm really sorry for you, son. It's a hell of a thing. What am I gonna do now? Be grateful that for the first time, you see your life clearly. I'm afraid. Perhaps you could help somebody. You saved my life. You're a good man. You're a good man, and I, uh... But I'm not a good man. Not usually. You lived your life like a man, Arthur, and you turned into a good man. I ain't looking for forgiveness. It ain't about that. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Arthur. Your journey, your path, will be just fine. I'm worried my path is coming to an end, Mr. Swift. I'll hold them up. Take a gamble that love exists. And do a loving act. If we were all like you, things might have turned out differently. Thank you. It would mean a lot to me. Saved my life before he passed. I don't talk about him much, but I think about him. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to my chat with Roger Kalak. How you're doing? Guys, he's waiting on the line, so we're going to get him in straight away. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please do. And if you want to become a member of the Onion Army, you can become an Onion Lover, an Onion Master, an Onion Fan. Become a member of the channel, guys. Get the exclusive emotes. And everything that comes with it. I really, really appreciate it. With that being said, guys. Let's get into our chat. With Arthur Morgan himself. Roger Clark. Hello. Hey, Roger. I hear someone. Hey, you man. can hear me it's dan we How's are live oh nice one let me start video what's going on there we are oh in the booth today oh yeah yeah i find this is a lot easier uh and plus i sound better off this mic <laughs> hey you sound brilliant hey thank you you too man how are you i'm well i just i finally got a ps5 you did yeah i just got it today oh got nice the Got the confirmation and email and everything. I'm chuffed. I'm well chuffed. How, how is it in Australia? Are you, is it is it as short in Australia as it has been over here? I hear America probably has it the easiest. Yeah, it's well, not... in Australia, there was only an allocation of 20. So I was lucky enough to get what? one of the 20. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but there wasn't many. There wasn't many, that's for sure. <laughs> wow. Um, have you ever been here before, mate? Down here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful. What did you think? Tell uh, me it was positive. 
I know. I, yeah, absolutely. I, I love Australia. Uh, the first time I yeah. went to Adelaide, I was visiting some relatives of my gr- a girlfriend at the time, and that was really nice. Adelaide really surprised me because it was, it was a lot more. The weather and the terrain and all that was a lot more European than I was expecting. You know, there was like there was we were there in autumn, and uh, there was yeah. like fall leaves and stuff. And then and then I did a show in Brisbane uh, about ten years ago, and we we performed at the what was it called the Powerhouse Theater. Uh, just there on the Gold Coast, ah. and that and was, what was great. That for? We did we did Macbeth. We were touring Macbeth at the time, and it was oh, the first wow. time it was the first time the company had gotten to Australia. So we were re- really excited. And then that's when the tour finished. So once we finished that, I went inland. I went inland past Toowoomba to like the beginning of Toowoomba. The You've been to Toowoomba, Roger I, Clark. I passed through it. I think I may have had a drink there. Yeah. But wow, yeah, my, my not only have I been to Toowoomba, but my uncle has been to Toowoomba. <laughs> he That's... was in there, he was there during the Second World War because he was in the South Pacific. That is so random. So, how have you been, mate, in the last uh, in the last little bit during COVID and everything? You, you're staying healthy, mind yeah. and spirit, you know, going crazy, but still, healthy. <laughs> you know, I'm. <laughs> I've been, I'm very grateful over the pa- for the past year, to be honest with you. I mean, it sucked for everyone. I mean, but it's been a, it's a universe. Everyone's going through it, which is kind of, kind of makes it a little better, I think. You know, there's also a lot of divisiveness too, you know, because people have politicized it, like with masks and whatnot, and that sucks. But everyone mm. is going through this. And so that kind of, in a way, it does make it a little easier. But I, I mean, if it wasn't for, you know, there's so many of my theater friends in New York that literally Broadway has st- is still shut down. And I know theater is in most parts around the world. And so many of my theater friends haven't done anything for over a year. And I've been lucky that I can, I can still do voiceover mm. and voice acting, you know, in the comfort of my own home. Thanks. Because you've dabbled, you've done a lot of theater, haven't you, over the years? Yeah, it's where it's basic. Most of my resume is theater. Yeah, that's how I started out. Yeah, and wow. uh, that voice and with voiceover and voice acting probably taking a, a very close second, and performance capture too. You know. Yeah. 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 Um, Kota says, "Where's the beard?" <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god! Yeah, man, I got sick of that. It was a COVID beard. It had to go. Yeah, I had the know? same. Now I've, I've trimmed it a little bit, but still, it's still remnants of it. But yeah, um, I, it, it was getting pretty crazy. You know, for those of you that don't, you can see it. <laughs> I'll show it to you. But I, I, it had to go. You know, it was getting. It had warmer. to go. What was the wife saying? No more. She, she was kind of like, you know, it'd be she nice was a if fan. it was gone. She didn't mind it, to be honest. I don't know why. Because look, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a COVID beard, yeah, and the hair as well, yeah, yeah, that's nuts, right? And that's literally me sat here, so yeah, because now I'm I'm getting older, so there's loads of gray in the stubble, so <laughs> I'm I'm still I'm starting to become more clean shaven now. So on on your IMDb or Wikipedia, wherever I looked, it said Irish American. How does that work? So you were born in, were you born in Ireland or were you born in America, but parents yeah. are Irish? I, I did it. I went backwards. I was born in New Jersey <laughs> and then yeah, okay. to, to my mother was Irish and my dad was Irish American. And, uh, yeah. And then we, we moved to Ireland when I was 12. Uh, but I spent every summer there of, of my childhood as well. So I kind of did the emigration thing a little backwards. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I, I grew. Up, I spent the the latter half of my childhood in, all in Ireland, in the west coast of Ireland, not far from where my mother grew up in County Sligo. And yeah. I did my my. Uh, I don't know what you what level of education you call it in Australia, but in Ireland it's secondary level education and. Oh, okay. Like yeah, high yeah. school, basically. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you do say high school, right? I remember yeah, home yeah, away yeah, neighbors yeah. now. Yeah. And. Um, so then you came back here. What at in the twenties. No, came no. Back to America. No. No, then I trained in Britain. I trained oh, in okay. I trained in Wales. Yeah. In the old South Wales, as you guys might say. And um <laughs> yeah. I was in Cardiff and then I uh and then eventually after graduating, you know, you, you do 
you just migrate to London as you do, because that's where most of the work in the UK is. Yeah. Uh, so I, I work, I, I spent all my 20s in, in, the, in London, basically. Um, wow. Doing a lot of theater, a lot of voiceover. Um, and uh, that's how where I began my career, basically, was in the United Kingdom. And I, I moved back to, the, to America much later on until I, you know, I was in my 30s. Oh, wow. Uh, Jiminator, thank you so much. Uh, absolute legend. I remember he wished me a happy Easter on his Instagram. Red Dead Redemption 2 is easily my favorite game of all time because of his performance from Jim. Thanks, Jim. You never Thanks. get enough of these comments, do you? No, oh, I'm, I'm so glad that people like the work of, every, of all, everything we did. You know, we, with that, we spent a long time on that game. I spent half a decade on it. And um, that was just the performance capture aspect. You know, I know other designers and every, a lot of other team players were working on it even longer than that. Mm. So how, how crazy a decade on this game just for yourself. Half, uh, five years, five years. I Half think. a decade, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, that's that's a long time for a game. Most most uh, actors yeah. will only have a year, if that, won't if they? If that, yeah, yeah. So how the did GTA, that feel? The when, GTA when it was guys all said and done because yeah, the G, the GTA guys. Uh, I think they spent three years on it, and then uh, I was coming in really kind, kind of when GTA Five came out, but of course they were three protagonists so their work was probably a little more interspersed than mine was because mm. uh because you know you, you have the choice of which character you wanted to play and you don't necessarily have that in red dead 2 i don't want to give away any spoilers but i had a lot more work to do than say one one of the protagonists of gta 5 had to do. <laughs> so this it was a crazy contract i don't think i'll ever have another contract the likes of that again you know it's kind of comparable to if you were going to do six or seven seasons of a TV show, I guess, you know, as really? far as time so it and wasn't volume. based on, it wasn't based on per hour. You don't have to answer, but. Well, no, the contract, I mean, no, the, the, the contract was, you know, the SAG, SAG after contract. And obviously, you know, different studios work in different ways, but this was, mm. you know, the job's done when it's done. And yeah, I don't think I'll ever have a contract that long again. It's very unusual for an actor to get that much job security you know, <laughs> from one from one company. So it was it was something else. And uh, yeah, it, it, there really isn't anything else I can compare it to, and I'm not sure that there ever will be. But it was a long time. I loved every second, but it took a long time. It was a lot of work. Rockstar uh, are so committed to detail and and you know and attention to it then and oh, you know, they they are they are unparamount like the amount of detail yeah. they put in red dead redemption 2 it's the most detail i've ever seen in the game ever oh, unbelievable and gta 5 i'll never forget i remember before the game came out every once in a while they would show me a bit you know yeah and i remember and this was years before it came out and i had never seen this in a game before but by the time it came out i had you know, I remember the the snow in God of War, for example. I remember thinking our snow was the best, and then when God of War was like, "Oh, that snow's pretty good too." Well, ours is still better, but you know, <laughs> that's right. They came out in the same year. What a year for gaming! <laughs> it was, wasn't it? There's a lot of good games that year. Detroit Become Human, and yeah, yeah. God of, and the and then uh, Spider Man, I think, was it? The, yeah, the first, not the Miles Morales. Yeah, yeah, there was fantastic stuff and. Mm -hmm. That reminds me now. I'm going to be able to finally check out Miles Morales in a couple of weeks. Yeah, but uh, what was I saying? Yeah, um, what was the I detail, talking? Detail. Yeah, the attention to detail. For example, one of the, I remember for the first time I saw it. Well, you know, Arthur was just walking around on a beach, and and uh, I turned around and I looked at Arthur's footsteps, and his his footprints were in the sand, and yeah. I thought, wow, that's pretty impressive. But then it started to rain. And then I saw the footprints fill up with water. And I was like, wow, that's impressive. And then, then I saw the water splash with the raindrops that were coming down. You know, there was still, uh, the, the rain that was still falling down was creating little splashes in the, the now flooded footprints. And then yeah. that's when my mind started to get blown. And I was like, wow. Have you ever seen the videos my friend called Knights? He did um, amazing details of Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, 
Oh, millions and millions of views. That sounds there's interesting. About, there's about eight parts to the series because there's so many details. Usually, you only get one one video from him on a game, oh. but because this game's so detailed, he had that many videos on it. Just like the ball's yeah. testicles. Yeah, well, what are, they shrink. I can't even remember now. But the, the horses shrink when you go up and it gets cold. Yeah, they shrink <laughs> up. Yeah. How yeah. do you think of that, hey? They even have one. And we used to record dialogue for circumstances that you wouldn't think necessarily would happen, but some player would eventually come up with it. Yeah. For example, if you hogtie an NPC, and if you put the and if you put hogtied NPC right underneath the ass of a horse, and if you wait long enough for that horse to eventually defecate, some NPCs will actually have dialogue specific. No to that. way. Yeah, because they're like, insane. oh, why did you have to let the? Oh man, that's oh. <laughs> And they, they, there's a, I don't know how many, but there are, there is That's NPC hilarious. dialogue for that. Far out. Yeah. Um, Jim says again here, thank you, Jim. He says, thanks, Jim. Can we get a, can we get a Lenny? Oh, Lenny! Oh. Found you, Lenny! How many times did you have to say that? How was that? That was from one of the earlier missions, wasn't it? Yeah. It has yeah. been a while since I've played, so bear with me. No, not at all. I, um, that was from yeah that was from one of the probably one of the most popular missions that i hear about anyways and we never thought it it's funny what made, you never think do you you yeah, i didn't think it was going to catch on that much yeah and it was funny because most of that lenny dialogue was done in a booth similar to this really and, um, yeah because most of red dead was done via performance capture uh which a lot of people still call voice acting but it, it, it you know or confuse it for voice acting rather but it's not, you know. They're, it's they're, not. It's they're two totally different things now. The, both great, but totally different. But the Lenny stuff that was that was done in a booth like this. I'd say maybe maybe ten, twelve percent of my work on Red Dead was was voice acting, and then the other stuff what? was really. Yeah, everything else was wow. Was, and I did pretty much like maybe about 96 percent of what you see Arthur do, and the rest was so done. every every cutscene then is mocap. Pretty Everyone, much, yeah. Except for stunts, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the in-game stuff. And the in-game stuff, too. Because I know that the mocap stages aren't cheap. You know what I mean? So, they're... Oh, well, I know Rockstar are fine when it comes to money, but wow, that's an investment. Five yeah. years of mocap. Yeah. Far yeah. out. Yeah. Um, Ellie Dames, thanks so much. She says, Roger, what advice would you give to someone interested in video game motion capture acting, asking for a friend? I'm the wow. friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, is Bandai, what was the, uh, people ask me this a lot. And, um, mm. you know, uh, my end to it was through voice acting and being a gamer, I guess. Uh, I first started, sorry. I first started oh, doing good. performance capture in the UK. Um, my first gig. Uh, w w Shell Shock 2, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Not many people know about that one. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Zombies and Viet Cong in the same game. It was pretty re It was pretty crazy. Hey, it was a uh, pretty cool game. Come on. Yeah. I never got to play it, but I did watch, I did watch a playthrough on... Uh, on on youtube but that generation yeah. i went i went xbox so i don't think it was oh, available okay. on xbox. you've switched now have you i've i've done playstation every generation except for the xbox 360 because i thought the xbox 360 was better than the ps3 but every yeah, other generation okay. i've been playstation and yeah. now i got and now i got a switch my boys are <laughs> going to be happy because now they get to take over the ps4 completely and utterly now <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah they keep breaking the controllers man how old are your kids by the way six and eight. Ooh, yeah so, so starting to get an no attitude. red dead not red no, no red dead yet no no nope. when when will you let him play it i don't know maybe maybe double digits for guns i think i don't yeah. know yeah and now so, you know gta 5 maybe teenager <laughs> uh, you know yeah they're great so, games, but yeah, they're, they're a bit young. They are violent, that's for sure. You can, you can stick to the Switch, yeah. <laughs> so any other advice for Ellie that you can think of? Oh, God, yeah, I hardly gave you any. I'm sorry. Um, no, all good. You know, my my advice to people, I mean, obviously, it uh, don't... 
be ready for a lot of rejection and uh, mm. make sure that it's your passion. And uh, if you love mm. doing it, then it's not a job. Uh, be ready for a lot of rejection because uh, yeah, and, and you have to learn how you have to learn how not to take it seriously or personally, for that matter. Even when it is personal, uh, you just got to let it slide off. Um, more often than not, the reason why you don't book the job is something that is completely out of your control, and it's never it's never why you think. But uh, my advice to you would be to get yourself a microphone and practice, and go go work begets work. You know, I started off in theater, and I still believe that theater is the best medium to learn acting from, and. The reason why it's pretty good you got the live crowd and you have mm. a live audience right there in front of you there's no filter between you and the audience you learn what works and what doesn't work in real time because they yeah. laugh or they don't laugh or they do they give you the reaction that you want or they don't give you the reaction that you want and once you learn how to listen to the audience as well as the audience knows how to listen to you then that's when you start becoming, in my opinion, anyway, that's when you start learning how to become a better performer. Great answer. Parzival says, how are you doing, Mr. Clark? Hope you're doing well. Your acting in Red Dead Redemption 2 is just wow. You are the legend. Not to forget, Rob. Big no. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And without Rob, you know, I, we wouldn't be sat here chatting. Hey, Rob Weedoff is the OG. He is, but... I tell you what, you put on a pretty fucking good performance. <laughs> Excuse Thank my you. language. Uh, I remember I playing what, the. I remember playing the first Red Dead before I had even knew. Yeah, I was, was going to say you've played it, haven't you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was funny. I took a long hiatus from gaming after I graduated college. I stopped for ages, and then like ten years later, I started. I picked one. I picked one up again, and that. And I was like, I was out of touch. So I remember the guy in GameStop. He asked, "What do you like?" And I said, "Ah, usually open world." story driven stuff so he gave me skyrim and he gave me red dead and those were two pretty good recommendations and i remember the when wow you know, spoilers aside but you know when at the end of red dead redemption i thought i had done something wrong and i was going back to previous saves and my wife was uh, even, my wife uh, was even getting involved like what do you mean you know and because she was enjoying it too it was the one of the few games and it's not just my wife either, but loads of people tell me Red Dead is one of the few games that they're either their wives or their girlfriends or their, their parents or their grandparents enjoy watching. I can't believe how many grandfathers and grandsons have bonded through Westerns via video games because of Red Isn't Dead. It I, crazy? Never would, I never would have thought that would happen because my dad yeah. used to scream at me. He'd get off that damn thing. <laughs> if only he knew now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever beat Skyrim? <laughs> no no i still haven't I completed say. it yeah oh it's not a it's not a big game it's not a long up, um short i got game. so caught up in the side missions that i got quite a bit through it uh, i forgot what the original i forgot what was happening in the original storyline so i kind of lost interest so what have you I got for ps5 what games have you got at the moment i um i just i just b bought it today so it's not delivered okay. yet but uh, okay. i'm gonna get miles morales and i think i'm gonna get demon souls and it comes with that Astro Room too, doesn't it? Playroom, yeah. Playroom, yeah. I've got, it's worth hear, playing with the kids. I hear, it's, pretty fun. I hear that's pretty fun. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, I'm going to get probably Demon Souls is the first thing I'll be playing on it, and then Miles Morales. Alex says, "What was the hardest scene for you to act in?" Ah, oh, I get that question a lot, and um, well. There's two kind of two answers, I guess. Well, first of all, crouch running is the hardest thing that I had physically that I had to do. Because <laughs> like, because I said earlier, I mean, uh... Rockstar, you know, this doesn't happen with a lot of studios, but I really did do the, the great majority of all the, the animations that you see Arthur do. And if it wasn't me, it was either a stuntman or it was Rob Weedoff because yeah. myself and rob shared the, some of the side missions i think i did more it was maybe 60 40 but we would share the side missions because so the side missions could be completed by either characters oh my god i didn't even realize that That's yeah crazy. So, so he would do one and i'd adr his mocap and then vice versa you know depending wow. on which depending when you decide to do the mission well at what point in the game so yeah. 
So me and Rob shared the side missions and then anything else that was more stunt orientated, that would have been a stunt guy. But everything else is me. And crouch running was a pain in the arse, man. It really, really, it's a good workout for the thighs. Because <laughs> I had to do it for maybe a day or two. Because you're crouch running, then uh, wow. you're, crouch, you're crouch walking, then you're crouch sneaking, then you're crouch running with one gun, then you're crouch running with two guns, then you're crouch running with a rifle. Then you're crouch sneaking with, I mean, it was a long time. So it was a good workout. At but least that, when you're playing, you see yourself, you know, doing everything or most things. I can't tell you, you know, I was really pleased that I, I had the, at least the option to do most of the animation for Arthur, because I feel that gives an authenticity to Arthur. Yeah. That you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily enjoy in other games. I think sometimes you can tell. Uh, oh, yeah. The mo the mocap is different for cutscenes than it is in in-game animations. You can tell it's a different person. At least mm. I can with some games. It's not the case with Rockstar games. They don't do that. Uh, they don't cut know. any corners, do they? No, no, they Far really right. don't. They really are for fully for the the authenticity. But to, I remember acting wise, the hardest one was the first spoilers, the first death scene. Because I knew that mm. was, we probably did that maybe four years in. So I, I had known wow. for three and a half, wow. for pretty close to four years that this scene was coming. So I was a lot of, it was, I, I, I was nervous. Yeah, so it made me nervous and I, I wanted to get it right. So that was a little difficult, that one. And I know it worked out, but how was it playing that scene out on the day? You know, it was good. It was good. Me and yeah. Pete had done... We had been doing a lot of the fighting stuff before then. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we were we were getting ready. And, uh, yeah. you know, typically we'd get our we'd get our pages like a week or two in advance. So we had we had time to prepare and, and work on it, you know, which I'm really grateful for, because in a lot of, you know, when you, a lot of voice acting, especially in gaming, you know, you don't get the script until 15 minutes before you're in the booth sometimes. And it's mm. not, and sometimes it's because of the NDAs and sometimes it's because they don't want you to know, but other times it's because they literally haven't written it yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, far out. And, you know, so to have that prep time for such a pivotal part of the story was, it was very much appreciated, you know, because, you know, we were able to give it, a, we wanted to do a good job and we were able to devote enough time and energy to make sure that we could give it the best we could, you know. Oh, unbelievable! You two together. Um, what about the like the emotion? Because I was looking back, like Arthur's last ride, when the when the horse dies. I mean, we're going to spoil, guys. So if you haven't played it, we are spoiling here. Um, some of those scenes are just so emotional. Uh, what, what did you ever get emotional on set at any point? Like, were there ever any tears, or did it never get to that point for you? I mean, tears, Roger crying, no, and <laughs> and Arthur doesn't cry either, so, but uh, yeah. I was definitely feeling it, you know, yeah. I was definitely feeling it. Uh, one of the moments that was probably the most emotional for me, for Roger, is, uh, well, the last, the very last scene I, we did was, uh, I believe, uh, going back to get the money, uh, uh, high honor and when i give john my hat and satchel after my horse gets killed and then arthur goes yeah. back to get... so i think that was the last scene i ever did uh so yeah it was it was weird to do that you know especially like the the metaphor of passing on the hat to someone oh, i know yeah but it's it's it should have been the other i mean it, me giving it to Rob for what he's going to do in the game that made this job yeah, possible no, in the it's first just... place. It was really meta. <laughs> but um, uh, Rob's yeah. such a joy to work with, you know, it was that was emotional. And then there's this other one that was kind of towards the end of the filming uh, where it's after you rescue Trelawney from prison or that jail cart that he's in. Mm -hmm. And... And then you have the option to go fishing with Dutch and Hosea afterwards. And you, you commandeer a little rowboat and you go off and then you sing a bit of fishing songs and you're fishing. 
So that scene was one of the last ones we did too. It was like in the last few months, and you know we learned that song together in the green room, and then performing it for for re- you know it was kind of it was it was really nice because by that point, all the actors and the cast were really a gang. You know we had been working together yeah. for five years. You know children had been born and people had gotten married and you know people passed away too. So we we really were a tight unit by then. And I think that Mm -hmm. the the relationships that all the actors had developed with each other over the years shows in the game. And I'm really grateful for that too, that we were able to kind of convincingly portray this, this, the cohesiveness of this gang so that when it finally all falls apart, it makes it that much more tragic, you know? I can't, I I tell you what, it's gotta be in my top five games ever. Oh, Red Dead 2, seriously. I agree, but I'm biased. I know you're a bit biased, though. Yeah. <laughs> but it isn't. It isn't a happy experience the whole time. No, I'll tell you not. that because when you when I found when I was playing through it and uh, Arthur reveals the um, that you know you pretty much know that he's he's probably gone here because of the disease. Mm. That hit me pretty hard, and after that was actually a bit of a struggle to play because you, you sort of know how it's coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's different from John too, because with John it's like that. Yeah. And so that kind of makes you expect, oh, is it gonna? Is that? Is this? Is this, is this gonna be the same thing? And yeah. You realize, yes, it is, but not quite, because now you see it coming. Mm. And, it, and it's just, and there's no avoiding it. You think you might be able to avoid it, but I, I, I mean, there's apparently a lot of people Google searched when the cure for tuberculosis was found, and you know, really. It, it wasn't in 1899, that's for sure. <laughs> so people are like, wow. oh, that's not a good sign. Yeah. Uh, but at Did you ever time, struggle to say that word what? in the booth or in the in the mocap stage? Tuberculosis? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a good question because I don't actually think Arthur ever says tuberculosis. Oh, of course. Maybe yeah. he, do- he usually says TB, I think. But I- maybe he did, I don't know. Someone will probably know the answer to that better than I, but I think yeah. he says T. I got the TB. That's usually what he said. I love how you can turn it on just like that. Uh, Jiminator says, I cried when Arthur took and put his hat on the last time and started running into the forest. That's the way it is. Started playing. Yeah. yeah. See, a lot of people start crying at that point. It's crazy because they're just so connected. Yeah. That's the thing, you know, because it's different from film or TV. In many ways, and one of the ways is, as when you when you're playing the lead in a video game, uh, you know, with, uh, when you let me say that when you're playing the lead in a film or TV show, you know, you gotta get the audience on your side. Obviously, you gotta do a good enough job so that they empathize with you. And in gaming, that job is a lot easier because they are you and they are responsible mm. for your actions, so they automatically identify to with you already. So that that's one of yeah. the things that makes it a little easier. There are different challenges elsewhere, but uh, as far as I think that's one of the reasons why Arthur's death hits gamers so hard is because at that point they're about sixty hours in with this guy and they have shared a journey with him and they've led him and they were him and they're responsible for his behavior and his actions. So I mean, it, you're pretty invested. Hundred percent. Uh Faded Flame. In the game, you and the other voice actors have to play what is essentially a family. How did you how did playing the role together affect your relationship with them from Faded Flame? Well, Faded, um, I think I said that before, and like we were working together for so long that uh we were a gang, you know? And yeah. I think that that really probably came still across. be close now, eh? We are, yeah. Yeah. But you know, and Again, this is this is just it proves what I was saying earlier. You know, you you got to stop calling performance capture voice acting. You got to yeah, stop. No. It's you, acting. You know, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's all acting. All of it's acting. You know, yeah. but but, but you, there is a there is a clear difference. There's people, so, they're they're two there completely is, yeah. separate things. And you know, it. A lot of people think I'm precious for for pointing that out. But let me just tell you, man. If if you're a great voice actor. And you've never stepped foot in a mocap studio, you're not gonna 
you don't know what you're doing and vice versa. You know, if you're an accomplished mocap artist and someone puts you in a booth because they saw, oh, well, he was in this so-and-so video game, let's get him voice acting. Mm. You might you might be very sorely surprised. You know, you don't ask an electrician to do a plumber's job and vice versa. And, you know, there are lots of voice actors who are more than accomplished in, in performance capture and vice versa. The two should never be taken for granted to be the exact same thing. It's, it couldn't be more different, to be honest, because voice acting, you're usually by yourself in a booth, not dissimilar to this. You've got your script. You don't need to memorize it. It's very isolated, isn't it? Compared to mocap, very freeing, like a theater performance. Yeah. You've only got one tool at your disposal as a voice actor, you know, mm. and you've got to create a whole character based on that. And sometimes the previ the other dialogue hasn't even been recorded yet. So you could be reading with mm. God knows who, and you have to bounce off of what you anticipate to be a performance rather than the actual performance itself. With performance 100%. capture, it's... I think that's it, why Red Dead, so the... the the um the the acting is so good because you're bouncing off the actual actors themselves oh you know yeah. that's there's so many little idiosyncratic details that the performance capture brings across you know it's just simple things like wiping your nose mm. you know a lot of animators don't think to put that in there you know because one oh, sometimes no. their workload is so bad that they can't put in little no, things like yeah. that but that's what makes characters human is little things like that and when artists bring that stuff like that to the table in the performance capture which they can't necessarily do in voice acting it adds a, do, a different nuance to the performances you know and when you're bouncing off your colleagues and when you're performing i mean it's not that different from film or tv to be honest with you uh, performance capture is very similar actually mm -hmm. uh, the only difference i would say is that the camera can be anywhere in performance capture um, you don't know where it is that they, cause they can change it in post if they want to. So you, in, in some ways it's a little more theatrical cause you're not sure where the camera is and in gaming, yeah. especially they, they do go for the wide angles a lot, uh, so that the player can see their environment. So you're, you're going typically more wide shots than close ups than you would on film. But other than that, it's not that different from film. You know, you're rehearsing a scene and you're performing it just like you would uh and and one of those sets and voice acting you know they're one is neither one is not better or worse than the other but they are two totally different things and a lot of people still say voice acting just because i had a habit i think it's, it's a habit i think absolutely it is yeah it's 20 years ago it was all, you know it, it pretty much was all voice acting and yeah. but for, but pcap is is just is i'd say it's at least 50 50 now if not more so and and you know yeah. it can be damaging to professionals if you're being if if the if the public misunderstands your work on such a level that they don't even they're not even like they don't even understand how it was done you know i've got amazing voice acting opportunities since red dead came out but uh a lot of them mm. are surprised when i tell them you know i haven't got as much voice acting experience as you think and they're like well, <laughs> yeah what? you're arthur morgan i was like yeah that wasn't voice acting sorry guys and like oh okay. yeah. Oh, yeah of course it wasn't yeah but, yeah um, wow but it's a wonderful Crazy. industry all the same and to be able to to be able to do both is just the biggest gift ever oh you know? yeah unbelievable fizzy phil a big um fan of a big part of our community here he says Love from South Af South African in New Zealand. Love nice your performance. One. Love your performance on Red Dead Two. You are one of my favorite actors of all time. How's that oh, for praise? Thanks, Fizzy. Go and have a go. Go have a, a nice beer in a crowded room in New Zealand on my behalf. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. And really enjoy it. <laughs> um, I'm glad. I'm glad for you. <laughs> Ham Ham Noel says. Probably one of the saddest scenes in the game was when Arthur talked to the sisters at the train station. Was that mocap? That was mocap, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, That's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Sister Calderon, wonderful actor. Uh, and she's also in the original. Uh, and she's in Undead. Really? Yeah. I th she might not be in the original, but she's definitely in Undead. Um, wonderful what? actor. And when are we getting an Undead in this game, hey? <laughs> Yeah, you're asking the wrong person. Even if, even if I, I knew know. the answer to that, I would tell I you I don't. <laughs> I but, think um, it's funny yeah. about that nun mission, though, because some people don't mm. even if you if you don't help out the nun in Saint Denis or if you have low honor, uh, 
that that mission doesn't happen. Or you, no you way. Up, yeah, you, you meet with Reverend Swanson instead. This is the Reverend. detail I'm talking about. We yeah. like half the people don't even see some Swanson. of the stuff that. No two playthroughs are the same. I mean, that's the case with most games nowadays. But especially, I mean, it's oh, not to this level. I think you got, I yeah. have to take my hat off to him. If um, you have low honor, or if you didn't help out. Or if you didn't do those missions for with Brother Dawkins in San Denis, then Reverend Swanson's at the train station, and it's total. It's a totally different scene. Have you played through the game yet? I forgot to ask you. I'm on you my have? second second playthrough now. I'm taking wow. ages on my second playthrough because I'm trying 100 percent at it, and I don't have the patience. But so you uh, fully went through. How many hours do you think you clocked in? Oh, over a hundred. I'm probably about a hundred now. I probably, yeah. I think my first playthrough was sixty-five, and now yeah. I'm really, and now I'm really taking my time, and I've clocked in forty hours, and I'm just over halfway now. I think. I'm What's it gonna... like you you playing the game? Are you critiquing yourself the whole way through, or are you going, "Oh, I did that pretty good," or how do you, how does that work? It was weird at first, but I'm kind of used to it now. Yeah. You know? But uh, what I'm, what the reason why I'm playing the game now is I want to see what everyone else was doing because I knew I know what I did. Ah, uh, yeah. So I, I want to see what everyone else did. You know, some of the things I haven't seen. Uh, you know, but they may have filmed it without me. They may not have needed me. So I want to see the work of everybody else, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, Bourne says I've seen some people say Arthur's last ride was too melodramatic, but it's supposed to be. We know this man is dying, so let he, let us ball our eyes out. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let, let me cry. Uh, yeah. There's two different versions of that ride home, too. Oh, my God. Really? Well, it's, it's I'm, not, I'm learning a lot today. They're not uh, major differences, but if you have the high honor, if you have high honor versus low honor, then you hear different flashbacks. <laughs> Wow. Based on based on your honor level, you hear different flashbacks. You hear different aspects of Arthur's past coming back to haunt him. See, I actually, I'm I really love the horse ride with Unshaken being played. I mean, that is oh, one of yeah. the best songs I've heard in the game or ever anything ever. Yeah. Such a good song. That one really reminded me of the first Red Dead Redemption when you, the first time you go into Mexico. I think Rockstar. 100%. That was um, Jose. Oh wasn't my it? gosh, yeah. And I What's think the song. Oh, so far away. I think is so that's far, one yeah, of the lyrics far away, anyway. Far away, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, I think that was the first time I, I think I experienced that where, yeah, you, you're, you're playing a game and a specific bit of music comes on that you weren't expecting, and you're like, hang on, this is different. I just opened yeah. the door there because it's getting hot. But this is different, and you're like, oh, wow, you know. It's just they, they Rockstar never failed to surprise. They, that's one thing for sure. They always surprise. Did you they see never that? do what you expect? Sorry, oh, I keep no. interrupting. No, no, no. All good. That's part of Zoom, isn't it? Um, did you ever see Unbroken Live at the? Did, were you there for that? Was at the Game Awards? Yeah, when you won. At the did the one I was at. Be, yeah. Did they? Do oh it yeah. It live? Oh, oh yeah, they did. I, yeah. I yeah. replay that every month. That, that was insane. Ah, oh, yeah. How Amazing. good was it? Yeah. Oh. And I was sat next to Woody Jackson. I didn't meet Woody Jackson until those Game Awards. Can you believe that? Really? Wow. Yeah. And he was wow. like, oh, my kid loves Arthur Morgan. I love your music. Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Matthias, hey, Roger, can you give us a shout out to our band Pongo? I love your work as Arthur. Who was your favorite to work with on set? Matthias. Well, Matthias, thank you so much, man. Big shout out to Pongo. I hope you guys are killing it in whatever venues you're playing at. I, I doubt you're playing <laughs> at home. And maybe you're in New Zealand again. You're probably enlarging <laughs> it up. But uh, uh, best of luck anyways. And the best, one to, best person to work with, well, it wasn't Peter Blomquist. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Uh, all of everybody Every, you can't pick a favorite can't pick a favorite they're no. all awesome no they're all wonderful um i remember I, I was most nervous meeting everyone that i knew from the previous game and that was pretty much rob ben and steve 
you know, Rob playing John Marston, Benjamin Byron Davis, who plays Dutch, and then Stephen Palmer, who plays Bill Williamson. I was really excited to meet them. And I didn't, I probably met them maybe a, a couple of, a month or two into the job. And uh, yeah. they just, I, I was, you know, I was such fans of their work. I was a little nervous and like, and I, I was anticipating like, who's this guy, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's this fucking guy? Um, <laughs> Yeah. But they weren't like that at all. They were so welcoming and 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 such awesome. wonderful people to work with. Every single, all of them, and they had to be too. You know, I'm, I'm so grateful because the first time I worked with Rob Weedoff, I had to lift him up on my shoulder. It was that mission when you first meet John. No way! And, oh my, he's not a light man. He's about he's the like same six foot eight, isn't he? Well, no, Ben is six six. Oh, Ben is okay. Rob, Rob's the same as me. He's about okay. six one. Yeah, uh, although. I'm a little fatter than Rob now. We were about <laughs> we were about the same size when we started working together. But he's he's not a light man. He's he's not small. <laughs> has he got the voice of? Has he got the same voice as um, John? And like, or is he? Does he have to put a bit on as well? No, nah. it's him. He's, it's all it's him. him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you first? Uh, go ahead. Sorry, man. Obviously, he puts on some character, but he doesn't. He doesn't change his voice. No. That's all oh. Southern Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Who Cares says, Hello, Mr. Clark. Hope you're having a good day. Is it true you're working on something with Santa Monica? Anything you can share about future projects? He can't <laughs> share a damn thing. I know that. Uh, but you are working on video games, aren't you? You can say I that. Am. Yeah, I am. I am, yeah. yeah. And I will say, I know, how, I know where that rumor originated. And I, it's kind of funny because I, I mean, a lot of, like, just for example, with this thing here, someone said, oh, how do I, how do I get into video games? You know, I yeah. get people asking me that a lot. So whenever I see a studio announce that they're recruiting, I share it. And I did it once for Santa Monica. And the next thing I knew, I'm Thor. That's all I <laughs> That's all it took. <laughs> so I'm not confirming uh, or denying anything, but hey. I mean, the, it's it's a little bit of a leap, I have to say. I was. Hey, just I share- hope you are though. I hope you're in the game anyway. But I was just yeah. sharing a, a recruitment announcement by Santa Monica. Sorry, yeah. I don't mean to disappoint. So you're you're you are working on some big games at the moment, multiple or I don't know what? how big they're going to be, but yeah, okay. sure. I, I'm working on a few now. You know. I'm working on a few, yeah. It's hard to say how big they are, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard to tell, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> far out. Um, and I did five years of Red Dead 2. I'm not violating any NDAs now. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't get in trouble. All but good. all I will say is watch this space. There is one I can talk about. I'm in a game uh, coming out of a really cool indie indie studio in Wales. Uh, it's it's uh, Thrig House is what they're called, and they're coming out with a really cool platform game i think it's going to be 2022 and that's called lunavon and it's deeply embedded about into welsh and celtic mythology it's really cool and i play this irish rabbit (laughs) you play an irish rabbit an irish rabbit yeah so it's a bit different from our can you give us the voice or not we have to wait it's just an irish accent how's it going hey how you're well no no, (laughs) it's not like that but you know i don't remember the dialogue (laughs) right now yeah (laughs) cool i'm gonna play that hey um Um, uh miss secure and prime what was your favorite and least favorite mission oh well anytime i had to mispronounce column that was that i hated that <laughs> <laughs> we had that was a lot of talk about that you know over the years uh really so yeah. to anyone who's 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 cares it's not column it's column or driscoll it's not column <laughs> But Rockstar, Rockstar and their infinite knowledge thought, you know, Americans mispronounce foreign words all the time. I think we're going to go with Colm. And I went, OK, fair enough. Not how you pronounce it, though. <laughs> so anytime I yeah. said that, it really grated my gears. But apart from that, no, <laughs> there really wasn't any missions that I didn't enjoy doing. Nah. You know, there were some missions that took years to do, though. I mean, literally years. We would start them, and for whatever reason, they wouldn't be on yeah. the schedule again until three or four years later. And then some actor who was in it, he'll come back, and he'll be like, you're still on this game? And I'm like, <laughs> mate, still on the game? We're still on the scene. You haven't even finished the scene from three years ago yet. And he'd be like, this is the same oh. scene? And I'm like, yeah, dude. Far exactly. out. That is brilliant. Yeah, I don't happens. think you can say that about any other game. <laughs> 
No. Seriously. No. Uh... Uh, and that you. happened a lot with Julie Jesnick, who plays Mary, actually, you know, because uh, oh, yeah. uh, eh? they kept bringing her back for, to do more and more. I guess I guess <laughs> the producers liked it. Uh, and so they she would come back for a couple of days over the course of like four years. And she two years later, she'd be like, is this still? The, yeah, it's still the same game. Again. <laughs> I got to ask you, you play you play other characters in the game as well or like sometimes not I at would, all. Sometimes I would stand in. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but my you never voice... actually voiced. No. no. Sometimes I would stand in if it was just an NPC, you know, or if it was someone to, you know, if they needed an extra body. Sometimes a body, I would stand yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think what you're probably referring to is uh, after the epilogue and the end credits, you see Mary standing over Arthur's gravestone, and that wasn't Julie Jesnick doing that. That was actually me. So I was standing over my own gravestone, mourning myself. Yeah. but it was What's fun to play like? it was fun to play i was just enjoying playing a woman because i i don't <laughs> i don't often get to do that so it was no. fun yeah and of course uh, you know i i was i really teared it up and you know i really really went over the oh road. yeah you sold it yeah yeah sorry uh, julie <laughs> <laughs> dark, dark jedi reaper it's a cool name he says what was it like acting with invisible horses now i know that it wasn't invisible you were using was it um barrels yeah we we had we had yeah. horses uh but we didn't the act the cast my, we didn't work with live horses they got all that done in like a week or two because you know you didn't want you don't want to have horses nah. on call for five years so they got they got all the animations that they needed from the live animals in as in as quick a time as possible so then we would work with uh with set horses you know and then they would they would put those the the real horse animations in afterwards don't ask me how but we uh yeah we worked with fake horses yeah, yeah. although i can ride but uh didn't have to oh, on this can? project yeah i've ridden on i've done i've even filmed a few westerns and stuff so i've filmed with work, oh wow filmed with horses but i didn't have to do it on this project that's awesome are you still doing tv and movie stuff are you still pursuing that or are you going all in on video games you know uh Red Dead has provided such an amazing opportunity for me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I'm I'm very grateful for any and all opportunities that come my way. Uh, yeah, to answer your question, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm still doing <laughs> film and TV and, yeah. and I'm definitely pursuing voice acting too. You know, it's all good. It's all, it's all on the table. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, love, I love it all. I enjoy it all. That's uh, all, all. They're all different challenges, you know, you live in the dream. <laughs> Dennis says hello from Michigan, Roger. Hey, Dennis. How's it going? Miss, you ever been to Michigan? I haven't, actually. No. Uh, Lucas. Hey, Roger. <clears throat> hey, hey Lucas. Roger. Absolutely love your phenomenal acting in the game. Do you think Arthur's lines were stunningly written? Cheers from Denmark. Uh, well, Lucas, yeah, I do. Yeah, I think they were. <laughs> the, to put the it short, yeah. The main writers were Dan, Dan, uh, obviously, God, what's their last names? Who are the guys that, that run Rockstar? I can't believe this. Oh, man, you're going to have to cut this out, Dan. <laughs> oh, uh, I know who you're talking about Houser. as well, and I'm blanking Dan as well. Dan Hauser. Dan Hauser was one of the writers, and uh, he's now since left the, left the company, but Dan himself Houser, and Sam yeah. started it out, and... Sam's still there, but Dan is the, probably the main writer, and he himself and Michael Unsworth and Rupert Humphreys did an amazing job. And you know, we worked together a little bit, but uh, I felt that we we were working together even more, like outside of each other's proximity, because you know they would be watching what we were doing, and they I I guess, I, I think they changed, and they would you know they would appeal to our our strengths, and you know they would maybe the weaknesses sometimes they would write out or edit and yeah. i felt that we were really working together at least or at least listening to each other and if it was yeah. it was one of the it was a really pleasant experience to to work with writing like that because oh it was so it was simple it's elegant and uh and most importantly we had a mutual understanding of what arthur should be and that's kind of vital i mean if you don't if you're not all on the same page uh, with, with with how certain characters work, 
or don't work in certain situations, you know, then then there's a lot of a lot of problems can can turn up in, uh, later on down the road. But when you are working with really talented people who who understand and appreciate what you're doing and vice versa, it's it's truly a magical thing as you know, it, it helps establish a lot of trust. And when when you're working with someone that, you know, is good and you learn to trust them. And that's when that's when magical stuff can happen because you're you're relaxed and you're you're a bit more loose and you don't know what and you're kind of mm. like oh let's just see what happens, you know let's just see what happens because I know that whatever does happen it won't be horrible and even if it is we'll just do it again and differently. Wow, I wanted to ask you as well when you were playing through the game, because I I covered the Easter eggs on my channel, so I I reckon there was about eighty videos I uploaded just on Easter eggs. <laughs> wow, wow! I didn't. Um, I know there's a few, but I didn't know there were that many. Yeah, wow. like did you ever come across the UFO or the vampire or the? Oh, I didn't so meet. Many. I didn't meet the vampire, but I remember doing the VO. That was voice acting. I, yeah, because I, um, there's lines I, for that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember doing the lines for the vampire. I haven't met him in game. Um, no. And I remember there's some funny stuff there too, because some people you have to act really fast because he get he gets you. Oh yeah. He just gets one swing at you and you're dead, right? Yeah. So I saw some. Maybe it was you. I saw one guy really fast. He got out his lasso and he hogtied this this vampire before he got got to him, <laughs> and he put him on his horse and he he just rode around until day to, until daylight happened. Do you want to see what would That's happen? That's right. Yeah, that wasn't me, but I've seen that video. Yeah. Anyway, he didn't burn up in the flames uh, because of the sun. But I remember doing recording the the vampire. I and I did encounter the the UFO. Uh, you did my yeah. first playthrough. Yeah, I remember reading the note on the table, and I was like, I bet you if I come back here late night at night, then I'll see something. And I camped and <laughs> yeah, I saw it, and that was really cool. And um, see, that's the stuff I love as well. They put so yeah. much in. I haven't. Some people think that that's linked somehow to some of the Easter eggs in GTA Five, like Chiliad or or what is it, yeah. the Epsilon Group or the people. Yeah. Who, I don't know if it is or not, but you there can't was another. Confirm or deny? I have no idea. <clears throat> I genuinely don't know. You know, because um, uh, there was a, the Chelonians too. They have a bit of an Epsilon vibe on them, don't they? Did you ever come across the Chelonians in Red Dead? The Chelonians, as in the like the zombie you have to people at night. You, you rescue Mary's brother from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, yeah, they're yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. They're the crazy turtle uh, uh, zealots, you know. Oh and yeah. The, and then there's an Easter egg with them too, where <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> there's an Easter egg with them where if you, as long as you don't make your presence known to them and you meet them in the right place, they'll just they run off a cliff, like lemmings. Really? Just, yeah, in like a, a joint suicide pact, they just run off the cliff. I don't think I've seen that one. And it's, I hate to say it, it's hilarious because you know, <laughs> each and every one of them, there's about five of them, and each and every one, they think they're as be ascended, you know, into whatever ethereal. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as they take a running jump, every single one of them shouts out as they're falling, Chelonia! <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen that, I don't think. Yeah. Maybe I have, but it's been a while. But far and there's out. an there's an additional Easter egg. I don't know if I maybe I shouldn't even say this, but we did film it. Yeah. Where if the player wants to follow them, <laughs> <laughs> you can get Arthur or John going Chelone or Chelonia, and then you're dead. You know. Okay, I need to look this up after this. Man, that's amazing. I'm not sure if that's real or not, but I do remember recording that, and I remember Rob did it too. But that That's the Chelonians, the Chelonians are really funny. Do you do you remember recording for the? Um, I think it's a random encounter where you get captured or poisoned by that weird family. Yes, yeah, that was one of my favorite. The 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 incest the incest yeah, couple. Yeah, that was a, the pig that farm. Was cool. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. Those guys were funny. <laughs> here's here's a bit of info for you. Yeah, the guy, the guy who who's of uh, the brother from those two yeah is the same uh same actor uh you remember the beginning of gta 5 at north yankton and one of the gang robbers with michael and trevor gets it in the throat and he dies same actor wow yeah hey Rockstar... you, gotta, you you need a cameo in gta 6 
They better call you up. <laughs> they better call you up. Or you need to be a main character. Hello. All right. Uh, all right. We've got some more here. Thank you, Bulletproof. Uh, ben Mack, do you play games yourself and what games? Yeah. Um, Roger. Play, playing Bloodborne at the moment. Bloodborne. Wow. It's friggin' hard. That's pretty full on. Yeah. It's, people have been talking to me about it for years. So I finally thought I'd give it a try and... I mean, it's hard, but I'm starting to get better at it. So, yep. yeah, it is hard, though, man. That is oh, un yeah. is unforgiving. Unforgiving. Mika Bell, thank you so much uh, for that. Crank Mambo. Hey, Roger, much love. Keep doing what you're doing. Could I ask, what was the first game you played and your favorite game you've ever played? Oh, first game I ever played was uh, either Pong or something off the Atari 600. It might have been bowling or ET. Um, there was a track we're going, and field. We're going one. back. Yeah, that's early 80s, 80s, <laughs> maybe 81 or something. Uh, but the best game I ever played, I remember the game that had probably the most profound effect on me. Yeah. Uh, Red Dead aside, because, you know, but I think Final Fantasy VII. I think it was really? Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, I loved that wow. game. Wow. Did you play yeah. the remake? No, I haven't yet. No. Ooh. No, I haven't. And you I heard the remake isn't even the whole story, right? No, it's only part one like or... Halfway. Yeah. 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 I, might, I might give it a try, but the combat system looks so different. Uh, it looks... It look, uh, sometimes I get overwhelmed now because I'm like... I... Yeah. You know, I'm reminded by this stand-up... You know, Mark Maron has this bit in a stand-up session he does where he's like... I don't know how much time I left. I've left. So, you know, like whenever yeah. when somebody tells, oh, you got to read this book. Oh, you got to see this film. I'm like, do I? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much time I have left. I mean, do I really need to? <laughs> and I feel that way with some video games, like something that I know is going to be a massive investment and I'm not sure I'm going to love it. I'm like, Ugh. it's hard to I commit. get weird. Yeah, that didn't bother me before. But I guess now that I, I got less time to play games, basically, that's the reason. Yeah. So, um, but I, maybe you got two give... kids, man, and a wife. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that, that that should explain it all. Uh, Miss Curian Prime says, "Will there be a Red Dead Three and play as young Landon Ricketts?" <laughs> oh, yeah, Landon Ricketts, such a popular Red Dead character. He was awesome. Unfortunately, I think the actor passed away. So that oh, doesn't really? of course that doesn't necessarily mean they can't go back again like they did. You know, but uh, I have no idea. I have no. absolutely no idea. And I, even if you did, you couldn't tell us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you want, honestly, I'd be very surprised if we don't see another Red Dead game at some point in the future. But I have no idea. Do you know the sales on it now? Or, How many it sold worldwide? I think, I think was it twenty six million or something? Oh, just a couple. I know Take Two. <laughs> Take Two did a they they announced it at the shareholders recently. I think it's twenty six million copies. Uh, only a couple then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing. GTA Four is now up to like not four five is now up to like one hundred and forty million copies. But that that is a phenomenon, isn't it? That that game's just on another level. Like in terms it's, of, it's crazy. Like, it's over seven years old now, and it's still. Chopping, like one chopping of the, the charts. Yeah. It's still one of the top ten games in the UK. And it's kind of and it's and mostly now. I mean, everyone, a lot of people just play it for online now because you know you you've we've had seven and a half years to do the story, so a lot of the people, <laughs> a lot of the people are going online, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, Have you played through that story? GTA Five. Yeah. 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 Nice. After you got the geek. During, I was playing during. during. Yeah. Nice. It was actually really handy because, you know, while a lot of the technical things for the differences between cutscenes and in-game stuff and yeah. seeing how they they merge from cutscenes to in-game. And there was a lot of technical requirements that the actor would have to do for the animators to make that look seamless and to make it blend in nice and easy. So playing GTA V helped me understand the animators' needs a lot better. Mm -hmm. So it, And, of course, it was a lot of fun, too, and, you know. Yeah. Dan House is in the chat apparently. No way. And he says <laughs> he says, Roger, would you ever stream hey, a Red Dead 2 playthrough? 
Oh, is that what you want, Dan? All right. How about you tell us when the next Red Dead 3 is coming out? Oh, man, you wouldn't even know either because you don't work for Rockstar anymore. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, you want me to stream Red Dead, do you? Yeah. Have you ever thought about that or is it just something you, you prefer to play alone or? I don't know, man. You know, I yeah. saw I watched. I love Nolan North's retro replay. If you if you know what. Yeah, that that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've so, seen him play through Uncharted, yeah. I really enjoyed watching him play through Uncharted because the memories it brought up and it stoked in his brain. It was a wonderful thing to witness him, like going, oh, yeah, I remember this day, blah, blah, blah. And, and that was so cool because I had played Uncharted too. I, I think I got the anthology when that came out. And they had all, oh, nice. They had the three. They, they had the Drake's three. Drake's collection, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then about six, and then later on, four came out. Uh, so I played the anthology before I saw Nolan play it, and it was yeah. I loved it. So maybe that would be something I'll consider later on down the line. I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't even know how to stream. I'm pretty bad when it. That's comes all right. To... I'll help you. Just message me. I'll help you, mate. Okay. Uh, Mika Bell. Mika Bell says, John, can't believe you betrayed Dutch for all the things he's done for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, John betrayed Dutch or, or Arthur? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. mean, isn't it? horrible you know poor old dutch <laughs> uh i don't know what the hell you're talking about is that a line uh maybe i don't know yeah, i know i mean I there's know. so many born 92 hey roger love your performance what is your take on dutch did he change or did he become more the person he always was ah that's a good question mm -hmm. um i think he did change I think we get a glimpse of who Dutch was at the beginning of Red Dead 2. You see, you know, at the very beginning in the winter, we see why people revolve and, and draw towards this man. He is a leader, you know, and he cares about his gang. Mm -hmm. But then we also see a descent, you know, and uh, there's a lot of things that cause that descent. And, but the interesting thing is that you get to see what causes it, because we see Dutch at the, for the first time, you know, a fallen man. And... Uh, and then we get to see how he got to be there. And yeah, I think there was a lot. I think he, he initially was, I think he did change. I think his priorities changed. And what's more important, and more importantly, I think America changed. And, it, you know, mm. the outlaw way of life was just running out. And he wasn't, he was not accepting that as truth. So he really had his back up against the wall. And as that continued, he became more and more desperate and less and less of a Robin Hood and, you know, more like a, a killer, you know? And yeah. And when Hosea dies at the San Denis bank robbery, that's the angel over his right shoulder gone, you know? And then all yeah. of a sudden, and then not long after it's replaced by Micah over the other shoulder. And, you know, he, he loses a lot of good advice uh and arthur is not in a position to take over from hosea you know he it just doesn't it's not what the way arthur is uh so we see that relationship and indeed the whole gang disintegrate and one of the reasons yeah. is yeah one of the reasons is dutch but the other reason is you know that way of life is running out and one of the biggest sources of conflict within the game is the gang refusing to come to terms with that yeah, hundred percent. Texas Al, good luck on your hundred percent run on Red Dead Two, Roger. Thanks. About to finish my hundred percent takes patience and luck. Oh yeah, I heard some of the gambling challenges take forever. Like you have to get yeah. three twenty ones in a row, and that's just oh, pure chance. I haven't you know? done all the challenges. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And, I know a friend uh, that has. He said it was a was a battle. Do you need to hundred percent it to get the challenges, or does that platinum it? I'm, I'm confused. I think I think that's platinum it, yeah. All right, that's well then, the I, maybe I won't platinum it then. Maybe I'll just hundred <laughs> percent of it. <laughs> uh, Bulletproof, say greetings from Germany. Love Roger's work. Thank you. I got to say, there's so many people saying love your work. I'm only, I'm only showing you a couple. They're oh, they're yeah. flooding in. Like I'm sure there's loads of other things you're not sharing too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I haven't seen a negative comment, man. Oh, that's I have great. not seen one negative comment. So that's, that's a testament to you. That's nice. Um, I know you, you've got to go to you soon, mate. I Pretty don't soon. Yeah, up. yeah. About okay. Deutschland. Vielen Dank für alles. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Can you give me another 10 or we got to be gone? Sure, sure. Let's do another Beautiful. 10, yeah. Cool. Um, all right, we'll answer some more questions from you guys. Nice to see you in Black Lung. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what Mike calls for, Arthur. Yeah. This is for Roger. Have you been in talks to star in Rockstar's upcoming? Yeah, we've already mentioned that. Um, he can't disclose anything. Hey, Roger, what's your favorite Arthur Morgan quote and why? All the best from Moscow. Oh, wow. Nice one. Uh, I like, I like, there's, there's one line that a lot of other people, it's not that famous, but I just liked it because it was something he says to John, you know, and as you may know, the relationship between John and Arthur is, you know, it's not great at the beginning of the game. You know, there's a bit of animosity between them. There's a lot of, Kind of almost like a sibling rivalry almost yeah with arthur being the older brother and john being the the younger f up you know so one of the things arthur is pissed off about is that he thinks john gets a bit of an easy break for absconding from the gang for you and abigail and their newborn child for a year and he thinks that's kind of shitty of john and that he doesn't but so what does he say to john there's that mission before they go off stealing the sheep together and um and then they they steal the sheep and then they get ripped off selling them because the guy knows they're stolen and then you go on to meet up with dutch and strauss in the bar and they get held up and you have to shoot your way out of strawberry but anyway uh, arthur says something to uh, john which is kind of what we were going about earlier before arthur is yeah. one of the few people in the gang that sees the writing on the wall he knows that everybody's mm. days are numbered and Mm. he can see it coming even if nobody else can and he tells john he says listen i was prize pony once but this life this way we're the last for it i reckon and we ain't long for we're the last i reckon and we ain't long for it oh so he was a fortune teller he was he was he could he was a fortune teller he kind of saw saw the writing on the wall i like that when you become Arthur there, it just gives me so many flashbacks. It's crazy. Um, who cares? Do you think there are any chance for Arthur returning? Also, was there any backstory on the Blackwater Massacre? Mm. She's from Romania. Ah, yeah. Yeah, the Blackwater Massacre is still this infamous thing. And we, yeah. still, don't know, we still don't know that much about it. It's mentioned no. in Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. You know? And then we and everyone was oh when Red Dead Two come out, comes out we'll get to know what happened at Blackwater and we still didn't because we're they're fleeing from it, so we still don't know what happened. But we know that Dutch went a little crazy and that stuff it wasn't pretty and that a lot of innocent people got hurt and anyway I don't know, I don't know. No, but the only way Arthur could come back is if it's another prequel or who knows, man. I mean, geez, flashbacks. I, I don't know. I don't know if Arthur's coming back or not. Um, and naturally, I would love to carry on with this journey with Arthur if there's somewhere else to go, but I don't know if there is or not. You know, and don't forget, there, there, was, there was really no similarities in storyline or narrative between Red Dead Revolver and Red Dead Redemption. So who knows yeah. what's going to happen next? Who knows? Yeah. But they can't, they can't keep going back in time, though, because if they do, then <laughs> they're just going to get worse and worse guns. The guns will become worse. And I don't think well, gamers will like that. It's a testament to you, mate, that you get. You probably get this question more than everyone. Where, are you coming back or are you in the next game? So, um, <laughs> How do you memorize your lines, Grin Dragon? You just do it once, one, one word at a time. Yeah. yeah. You know, just uh, but the brain's like a muscle, like anything else. You exercise it in a certain way, it gets better at it. Yeah, Ash Ashantia. I'm probably stuffing that name up. Was surprised to see Roger in "I Shouldn't Be Alive." Oh yeah. What's yeah. that? Is that a movie? That was a TV show I did years TV and show? years ago. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. wow. It was years ago, over 15 years ago. Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Mitchell H. Hey, Roger, could you elaborate on the cut Arthur dialogue from New Austin or the early sections of Arthur's journal? A cut prologue? Cheers from America. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. Uh, yeah. There was some stuff cut. Uh, 
Initially, I, 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 yeah, I don't, I think maybe Arthur, initially, there might have been a moment where he may have been able to get to New Austin, but that, that, uh, that quickly was no longer quickly a thing. Gone, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of, of the, of the decision making as to what did or didn't get cut and the stuff and the dialogue that we did record for stuff that, that got cut. I don't remember that well. Yeah, uh, I do remember Arthur having some dialogue in New Austin, though, because uh, was it that one town that gets scarlet fever? So there was just a bit of NPC dialogue saying, watch out, mister, scarlet fever here. So that's where you find. <laughs> what town is that? That's Ar Armadillo, isn't it? I think it so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you find out why it's actually really well done because you find out why Armadillo is such a low run town because it yeah. was suffering from plague not long before. And then the same thing with the other town that is just a total ghost town. Yeah. Uh, that has that real badass sheriff in it who, who will just kill you, who'll straight up kill you if you don't. <laughs> Uh, what's that town's name called? I forget. Someone in the comments probably. Someone knows. will know. Yeah. Yeah. Someone it's the it's the ghost town in New Austin in Red Dead Redemption. But when you go to it in Red Dead Two, it's not a ghost town. There's still some people there. I forget what it was yeah, called. They're saying Armadillo, but it's. Um, oh, if that's Armadillo, then what's the other town? The one, the first town that you go Ch to. Clo Clolera, Chalera, Tumbleweed, Ch Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. That Tumbleweed. was it. Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed, Tumbleweed is the ghost town. Yeah, Armadillo yeah, yeah, yeah. is the first town. Yeah, Tumbleweed, Tumbleweed is the ghost town. Yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple more here for you, mate. Um, Roger, can you shout out my mum, Carol Ann Azar? <laughs> Carol Ann! Where are you, Carol Ann? You're all right, girl. <laughs> uh, Roger, can you tell my friend Lucas to finish the game from Brazil? Lucas. Hi from Brazil. Lucas, finish the goddamn game. What the hell's wrong with you? You owe it to me to finish my story. Uh, just quickly from Niam, what was your reaction when Arthur got TB when you found out about that? Oh, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was yeah. very interesting. Because yep. I, I, that was pretty early on. And I was like, oh, okay. So it was going to be a some although it's similar journey to John Marston's. It's not the same because like where you're know, one sudden and the other one you see coming and you know as in have, early on as in like 2015, like 2013. That, wow. Yeah. 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 So I was, I was. Uh, it was actually kind of a. It was a challenge to find audio of people actually suffering yeah. from advanced stages of TB because by the time they had to, the, the technology to record audio uh tb rarely got to these advanced fatal stages didn't think of that yeah but i was able to find some in rural india like in the 1940s of people who were unfortunately suffering badly for and in the latter stages of tb so i was able to hear some respiratory stuff uh which was which was useful if not a little bit morbid but uh uh you know, I, 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 I was excited, to be honest, because I thought, oh, that's going to provide a lot of opportunity. That's, uh, that's some stuff to chew on there, you know, this slow and gradual journey towards your demise and seeing that, you know, then what, yeah. what, what happens on that journey is kind of interesting. Yeah. So when, when you look back on this game, how do you feel now, years later, looking back on that amazing experience? It was a gift. It's the mm. change, changed my life, you know? Yeah. I'm very grateful for it. You know, before Red Dead, I was an off-Broadway actor. Uh, I was I was just about able to look after myself and my family before Red Dead, before Rockstar Games hired me. Um, and like probably the first half of my professional career, you know, I had to do other jobs to make a living. And, you know, it's pretty similar to most actors, really. You know, um, the, the the actors that you learn about and watch uh, are pretty much at the top one or two percent of the mm. of the profession and the majority the great majority of us are are struggling working actors who uh who you know are just grateful for from one to get one job and you know they mm. they they work from one job to the next and so red dead changed that for me and it made me in a it put me in a position to 
to really to not only just uh, be able to work so much but also to work in a really challenging environment with amazing talented people and it also gave me the ability to to look after my family and uh yeah. I, I, for that i'm eternally grateful uh, uh but uh, and the fact that the fans are so appreciative of the work that everybody did too which means the world i mean that's all you can really hope for is that your work is enjoyed and and the fact that so many of you guys seem to enjoy it is something that i can't describe it's like a dream come true amazing man well thank thank you so much for taking the time and thank you so much for hanging out today it's been um, a pleasure. everyone here's had a blast including myself i hope you've enjoyed yourself um before i let you go uh, can can Arthur Morgan say something to to Dan? What's your show called again? What's the Dan Dan what Dan gaming? Allen Gaming? Yeah. Dan Allen Gaming. You have got to be one of the best things to come out of Australia. Do you know that? You don't hold a candle to Ned Kelly. You would have been able to wipe the floor with him ten times over. You and me, we would have been unstoppable. Anyways, Outlaws for Life, partner. <laughs> thank you man thank you so much i really appreciate it have a great day man Have you got much planned i've got to work tonight uh um, nice yeah gotta do gotta do a bit of work tonight and the, we're gonna get the dinner ready for the boys now beautiful thank you so much man thanks for taking the time have a great All day the best. thanks everyone cheers roger guys. clark on instagram twitter youtube you know where to find him follow yeah. him cheers guys <laughs> thank you man all the best There you have it, guys. Roger Clark. What a legend. What a top bloke. What a lovely, lovely man. Did you enjoy that, guys? Did you have fun? Thank you everyone for the for the super chats. Blue Blue Blurry, Eva, Hudson, Crank, Niam, Otis, Lucas. Thank you all for becoming a member. I really, really do appreciate it. It really helps run the show and get bigger and better Ge guests. Guests. Guests each and every time. Who cares? Thank you so much, man, for the support. Jonah, that was awesome. Thank you, man. Yavier. Thank you. Pro do Greg Burke next. Well, I actually do have Greg Burke coming on. Would you believe it? The father from Far Cry. He's coming on soon. I've also got uh, Eivor from Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming on this week. It's a stacked, stacked guest coming, guys. Um, who can I reveal? We've got Magnus Braun from AC Valhalla on tomorrow. And then the day after that, we've got Greg Burke. How's that? We're on fire. Best interview so far, you reckon? Thank you. Appreciate it. Get Rob. Yeah, I'm going to try and get Rob. Of course. Will these be recorded? Yeah, yeah. So this will be on my channel if you want to go back and check out um, everything. I've got, I've interviewed Troy Baker. I've had um, Jeremy Lee, Female V on, Hitman already. So you can check out the playlist, guys, if you haven't already. And make sure you subscribe, would you? Become a member. You know how much that helps me? It really, really helps me out. Mickey, do this again. Yeah, I'd love to have, uh, have him on again. Dan, you better make that your intro and outro. Oh, how good was that from Arthur himself? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make that my in my intro now. Oh, that was awesome. That might be the best one I've had yet. I was playing RDO and just saw it. Nice, really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Rob would be a great in view. I know. John Marsden himself. We've got to get him on, hey? Let me work on a Gus. Alanator B. If you don't know who Alanator is, he's my brother, Brad. What a legend. 
Although he sucks at Warzone. Nah, I'm only kidding, man. This live will stay on YouTube. Don't worry. You've done us proud, boy. Thank you. Uh, before you end the stream, could you put the music from COD 4 in the end credits? You didn't find it last time. Here is the link. I didn't get the link, man. Pop the link in again. Sebastian, Red Dead 2 is my favorite game. Really love your work as Arthur. I think you're... Um, you're watching back, aren't you? Uh, thank you. Having him, he's amazing. Shia, thank you so much for checking, uh, checking in. Uh, Privateer, yeah, Greg's going to be on. Fusion, your channel's underrated, man. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate it. Going to miss Arthur. Looking towards your work, Roger. Uh, Roger Clark's the best actor. Just Vincent, how you doing? I wish there was a Red Dead 2 DLC. I know. I wish there was a Red Dead 2 DLC as well. Undead Nightmare or something, hey? When I'll be talking to Magnus Braun, guys. Magnus Braun is happening Wednesday, 5 a.m. US PST. Only because he's in Denmark, so it's a, for US people, it's going to be tough to watch live. Um, so whatever time that is, 5 a.m. PST, convert that to your whatever, wherever you guys are from. Um, that's happening tomorrow. How did I like this conversation myself? I really, really enjoyed talking to Roger. Really, really enjoyed it. He's a great guy. Fantastic guy. Roger is the best. He's awesome. Imagine five years of work, hey? Can you imagine that? Five years of motion capture and, and just putting on a performance like he did. Unbelievable. They need to remaster Red Dead 1 and Undead Nightmare. Ooh, Mitchell. That'd be good. That'd be really nice, eh? Hey? Watching from Mexico, Jose. Uh, Magnus Braun is Eivor in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Okay. So let me pull it up for you so you can have a look who I'm referring to. I, mean, I don't know how many of you have played Valhalla. Um, but there was a male and a female version of the character. So this guy here, that's Eivor from Valhalla. That's who we've got on next, guys. So I hope you enjoy that. If you could somehow get Benjamin Brian Davis, Dutch, I'd love to get Dutch on. Born, if I'm saying, am I saying your name right? Born 92? Uh, I'd love to get Benjamin Brian Davis on Dutch from Red Dead. Can somebody tell me why Abigail died? I'd love to see Red Dead 2 Undead. I know. I know, Leo. Rebobber, you really like Eivor's voice? He's got such a soothing voice, you know? I'm not doing it justice, but he's got a very raspy voice, you know, sort of talks like this a little bit. It's really beautiful. <laughs> yes, I got it right. Nice. Angel, where is Roger Clark, man? Please don't clickbait. <laughs> Guys, if, you, if you're coming in now, I've just, uh, I've just talked to Roger, so... This will go up as a, a live VOD. You can check it out if you want to see us. We talk for about an hour and ten. Or well, you should be able to rewind on this video if you want to check it out. You don't want to see my beautiful face, guys? Come on. Are you really here for the guest or are you here for the man himself? No. 
hey Dan, how do you get Roger on your podcast? I really want to invite him on mine. I actually reached out to him um, by Instagram. Yeah. Reached out by Instagram. You can follow me there, guys. Dan Allen Gaming. But he... um, I just sent him a nice message saying I'd love to have him on and, and it went from there. It really was pretty simple. Sometimes it's it's a lot more difficult, you know. Uh, for instance, Troy Baker, getting him on, I have to go through his agent, his manager, work out a time. It's a lot more work sometimes, depending on who it is. So, But I don't mind. As long as we can get him on, I'll do the work for you guys. Aaron, I never saw you before, but cool promotion for Roger what kind of content do you make Aaron um, I do a lot of Call of Duty Aaron on the channel I do a lot of uh, interviews live conversations with actors in the in the video game landscape um, I'll also be covering other games on the channel like Resident Evil Village you know God of War the next GTA you know big big games I, I usually cover them and do content yeah Super Gaming World, thank you. New sub here, thank you. I really appreciate it. Everyone who's come in and subscribed. It means a lot. I d- he did scream Lenny, the gaming Pringle. He did say Lenny. You can track it back. I will have timestamps on this video. I'll do them today for you guys. Um, and I will timestamp Lenny. <laughs> Get Rufus's voice actor on here. Ultimate Gamer, I've never seen your YouTube channel before. I sub. Thank you, Ultimate Gamer. Really, really appreciate it. Elikai, again, another subscriber. Guys, we're getting close to 100k, so please help me out. Subscribe. I mean, we're really getting close. I don't know what we're on. We're on about 86 at the moment. Lenny! And guys, if you want some cool music, Tommy Lucas did this track. How good is it? Tommy Lucas music. Check him out. does all my music so make sure you check him out Tommy Lucas music thank you for letting Roger answer our questions no worries man uh, who cares uh, nice stream man looking forward to the next one it's 1am here so i got to sleep love you brother take care see you in the next one Shia subbed as well appreciate that Shia really really do Captain, I found you a couple of hours ago. Watched the entire podcast. Funny, good. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And I see you've got a Arthur Morgan, uh, Arthur Morgan logo there. So I know who you're a fan of. My favorite video game is Uncharted 2, Last of Us 1, Crash Bandicoot, Tony Hawk's, one of the originals. Um, God of War 2018, Red Dead 1 and 2. I don't know. Yeah, probably Uncharted 2 is my favorite, but they're, they're some of my favorite. What are your favorite games? You tell me. <clears throat> you missed the sexy beast. Don't worry, you got another one here. <laughs> no, you can just go back on the video, man. It's all good. I need a little box for this chat. It's hard to read on this on this screen, isn't it? See? I need a poster here where the chat is. Turn it down. Oh, come on. You're all right, boy. The Uncharted games were awesome. They were, weren't they? <clears throat> I'm good, man. How are you, Try Hard Gamer? 
Red Dead 2 and The Witcher your favourites. The Witcher 3. What a great game The Witcher 3 was, hey? What a fantastic game. You watch the show as well? Metro, do you think there'll be a Red Dead 3? Um, eventually, yeah. Not for a while, because... You know, Rockstar Games, GTA 5, sells more than Red Dead. And it came out years before. It still sells more, so... Will he really play Thor from God of War, or did I hear him incorrectly? Uh, he was he wasn't confirming anything he was sort of saying it's funny how you can say all he did was share something and now everyone thinks he is Thor from Red Dead but no he's I don't think he's Thor sorry Thor from Red Dead I don't think he's Thor in God of War no Metro yes but in 10 years yeah 10 years or so Red Dead 2 I reckon Yeah, alright guys, well, I'm going to take off, but it's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for Eivor from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Magnus Brawny was also in The Last Kingdom. If you ever watched that show, great show. And, uh, you know, really appreciate it. Subscribing really helps. Becoming a member of the channel. Uh, clicking the join button and becoming a member really, really does help. Provides more interviews for you guys and uh, helps me pay the bills. With that being said, guys, one more time, why don't we play the little Arthur Morgan tribute? What do you think? Now, this tribute that I played earlier on, I don't know how many of you saw it uh, before I went live. It's called A Good Man. Arthur Morgan has 4.5 million views by the storm. Okay? So make sure you go and check that video out. Um, Ham Noel, thanks for becoming a member. Really, really appreciate it. Love from India, thank you. Um, all right, let's play it. A good man. Guys, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Hold on, before I go. How cool is this little scene? <laughs> oh, far out. I need, I need to work on these scenes. Anyway, thank you guys. Peace. Have I been a terrible fool, Arthur? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But one thing I do know, there ain't no shame in looking for a better world. <laughs> you know, nothing means more to me than this game. The bond we share. It's the most real thing to me. I would kill for it, I would happily die for it. Tell the truth, I ain't even sure I fully understand Dutch is playing with all this. Like I said, John, when the time comes, you go. You keep killing folk, Dutch. I'm just trying to make sure that some of us survive, Arthur. What about loyalty to, to everything? You've been loyal. I've been loyal. Look what that caused. You know, all that ever mattered to me was loyalty. That's all I knew. I wish things were different. Got tuberculosis. I'm really sorry for you, son. It's a hell of a thing. What am I gonna do now? Be grateful that for the first time, you see your life clearly. I'm afraid. Perhaps you could help somebody. You saved my life. You're a good man. You're a good man, and I, uh... But I'm not a good man. Not usually. You lived your life like a man, Arthur, and you turned into a good man. I ain't looking for forgiveness. It ain't about that. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Arthur. 
your journey, your path will be just fine. I'm worried my path is coming to an end. Hold on. Take a gamble that love exists. And do a loving act. If we were all lucky, things might have turned out differently. It would mean a lot to me. Save my life before we pass. Oh. Talk about him much. But I think about him. <laughs> <laughs>